Hey everybody, coming at you with a quick year-end update. Wearing my fancy schmancy high-definition goggles. I've been told I look way smarter when I wear these things, which I could use all the help I can get. So, anyways, wanted to uh, just pop on here and wish you a Merry Christmas uh, above anything else. I'm just praying that you have a beautiful time with your family, and I'm praying specifically that God would give you a deep-seated fresh revelation of what Christmas actually is, that our minds would forever be blown at the fact that God came down as a human in order to redeem us and for us to become adopted sons and daughters of the Most High God. Um, unbelievable. And I just pray that this is a sweet season, that we would get that, that uh, his greatest demonstration of love towards us would be felt and experienced, that we would encounter him in a beautiful way, and because of that, that we would worship him and bring glory to his name uh, this Christmas season. And I also wanted to update you on a few things. There's a million things I can update you on. Don't have time. You don't have time. Uh, but there's a few things I just really wanted to highlight, and especially for those of you that don't have a lot of time, I'm just going to pick three quick things here. Uh, the first is our new film, Show Me Your Glory. It will be translated into many languages. Our cast is super international. We've already got someone from Iran, Australia, the UK, Brazil, and other places. And we just believe with all of our heart that we are going to be able to use this film to reach people with the gospel in a creative and beautiful way. I believe millions of people will hear the gospel and that God is gonna bear much fruit through it. And I'm super excited about it. So continue to pray for us. Pray for protection, pray for provision, pray for all that stuff. Uh, we're neck deep in it. Number two is that we already have 10 camps scheduled for summer 2024. As you remember, uh, this year we had 31 baptisms and salvations from that one camp, right? One location, one summer. It's unbelievable. Um, I'm excited to see what God does this coming summer. And then last but not least, through the Alliance for Ending the Fatherless Epidemic, our national collaborative ministry, uh, we have two major pushes that are up and coming uh, that will be released soon. And I believe with all of my heart that those pushes are going to lead to an incredible increase in the number of churches that are engaged in this particular mission. In fact, we'll be, uh, hopefully we'll be onboarding an entire denomination, which is really big. And what that leads to is more kids being poured into. We're already through the Alliance and all of our partner ministries working together and, and doing their own thing. They've done for a long time and continue to expand and grow and be faithful to pour into the fatherless. There's already thousands of fatherless youth that are being discipled on a regular basis every single month um, and, and being consistently poured into. Um, so that's exciting stuff. God is continuing to move in this ministry. For those of you that uh, want to stick around for just a couple more minutes, I wanted to filter this last update for the year through Acts 1.8. It talks about through the power of the Holy Spirit, right? Through the power of the Holy Spirit that we would be witnesses in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and the ends of the earth. And, and really what that is, is for is for us to be cognizant, to be aware that we're called to the Great Commission, not just locally, not just on a state level, but also a national level and an international level. And I think it's good for every Christian to be aware of all of those locales, that we would all be aware of them and thinking about them, praying for them, and, and in some way, sowing into them. Even if it's just a small thing here or there, that we wouldn't just be in our own little bubbles, but we would be aware that God wants no one to perish and that he's trying to reach the ends of the earth. So I'm going to actually filter this final uh, update through that. Uh, starting with local. So locally, what have I been doing and how's God bearing fruit? Well, locally, um, I pour into a number of young ministers who are pouring into others who are pouring into others. And, and our goal is really to be seven generations deep. So the idea is that I would pour into somebody who's pouring into somebody and we have seven generations deep in discipleship, that that would be an indicator of how we are multiplying and that's the whole plan, right? That's the Great Commission. That's why the gospel spread so quickly with Jesus, with his three, his 12, and so forth. Um, and so that's been a huge push for me is to make sure that I'm faithfully and consistently every single week pouring into young ministers who are pouring into others, helping them to understand God's word and read God's word more faithfully, to have a deeper prayer life, to be pouring in, in, into others and discipling them in a way that's um, multiplicative 
not only that, but to be teaching life skills and, and how to be good husbands, good fathers, and good family people and good neighbors, and, and all the things that come with discipleship, making sure that, that I'm doing that and pouring into some. And also that I'm always connected to our mission. So my wife and I, we strive to continue to pour into single moms and fatherless kids and making sure that our local churches are catching fire with that mission, that we're bringing people from the church into that mission. I say it's one of my primary motivators and primary roles in, in our church, our local church here in Florence, Alabama, is trying our best to bring people that we're pouring into in the church and that we're friends with in the church into the mission and allowing them to be a part of it. Uh, the great mandate of James 127. And so there's a lot of other things going on locally. That's just a, a small snapshot. Nationally, as you know, the Alliance, um, you're going to see pictures uh, of us at the Fatherhood Commission. You're going to see that our documentary has reached a lot of people and it's about to have another push here in a second that's probably going to double or triple the number of people that see it. Uh, we're believing big things to continue with that. And so we're just seeing that through the Alliance, there's this national push as we pour into ministries, as we collaborate with ministries, as we learn from fatherless ministries who've been doing it longer than us, our, our role, our goal is that we would push into all of the states and all the counties in the United States. That's really our goal, to have a fatherless ministry in every chapter in the U.S. by 2029. But, but more than that, it's like, what is fatherless ministry? It's not just big brother, big sister. This is discipleship. This is us pushing people towards a perfect heavenly father and having a relationship with him. It's about the great commission. It's taking fatherless youth and teaching them to love Jesus and to show other people how to love Jesus. And so there's a huge push there and a lot going on. You'll see a picture from the Fatherhood Commission Summit that we just went to. And that's just a small fraction of the father-based ministries in this country. There are thousands. And there are so many people that are doing an amazing job of allowing God to move through them and through their ministries. And I'm just encouraged. The more the merrier. We want to work ourselves out of a job. It'd be great to say there is no more fatherless epidemic and Eric and Cameron need to go and move on to doing other things because there's really just not a great need for fatherless ministry anymore. And so how does that happen? It happens through you know, no competition, but collaboration with other churches and other ministries across the country working together to really attend to this very serious need, I think the biggest issue we have in our country. And there's a whole bunch of other things we're doing nationally, um, speaking and um, podcasts and all types of things where we're able to preach the word of God, proclaim the word of God, teach the scriptures and raise up other leaders, encourage people. And then internationally, we feel like internationally to the ends of the earth, that really is about the film uh, that we've already put out and the film that we are putting out. Uh, the Fatherless Epidemic was translated into 73 languages and it has reached South Africa and Uganda and Costa Rica and Thailand and a bunch of other places where the Fatherless Epidemic is also present. And we've seen uh, people encouraged by it. We've seen uh, tremendous fruit internationally from it. Um, and then we've also seen just from the kids we've poured in locally and nationally over the years who have now been mobilized to become missionaries in other countries. And so uh, we want to contribute on an international level in some way. We feel like those are the ways that it's working out. And with our new film, Show Me Your Glory, as I mentioned before, you guys, some of the folks that are our cast members and part of, of this new film are somewhat of a big deal in the countries they come from. And we just believe this is going to open up a platform and open up, up a door for a lot more people to hear their stories and for God to be glorified through their stories. And so we're just super, super pumped about it and so thankful um, for the opportunity to do this ministry. It's just fun. It's scary and it's exciting and it's uh, adventurous and it's fun. And uh, we're just stoked to be a part of it. Things you can pray for, obviously pray for our film, pray for funding, pray against technical issues. We have a couple of big film dates coming up on January 22nd and 23rd. Please pray for safe travels, for timely travel, people coming in from all over the world to be on camera, and just all the moving parts, especially the financial piece. Um, we are still actively fundraising and trying to fund that film. And, um, and so we need as much prayer as possible. Walkabout to 2024, as I mentioned, uh, we are already uh, pretty much filled up for the summer and uh, we're still fundraising for that. We're gonna be fundraising uh, all the way up until the end of April. And so please be praying for provision there. 
And then just various speaking opportunities. If you could please lift up our family, opportunities for us to share. Uh, I'll be traveling even to uh, New Brunswick Bible Institute in Canada in February to speak in front of hundreds of kids. I'll be bringing two of the guys I pour into and disciple with me on that trip. They're going to get a chance to speak too. And um, it'll be a great opportunity for them to be stretched and uh, for them to be able to step up to the plate in a big way. So be praying for that. Pray for our travels. Pray for our safety. Pray that we would get out of God's way. Pray that we'd let the Holy Spirit move and speak through us and um, and all that good stuff. And that's all I got for you guys. I'm going to keep it super, super short and sweet. I love you uh, to pieces. Again, I wish you a Merry Christmas. Uh, for those of you that feel a tug on your heart for year-end giving, as always, you can go to outdooradventures.org and click Donate. Uh, you can go to fatherlessepidemic.org and click Donate. Um, or you can also mail us a check uh, to 262 Crystal Springs Drive, Florence, Alabama, 35634. Uh, I'll put the address right here. And uh, not only that, um, but you can make the check out to Outdoor Adventures or you can make it out to The Alliance. It doesn't really matter. Uh, but either way, we thank you. We appreciate you. We love you. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, you got any prayer requests or anything at all, please feel free to hit me up. All right, bye-bye.